low divine masculines, happy 1111, which is higher vibrations, more energy to work with, and uh, just thinking out of the box, which is really funny because I just pulled an archetype and we got the box. And uh, I'll read about this. Uh, I'll give you a little bit of chance to look at this, the box. And I don't know if you notice that if you look at it one way, it looks like you're coming up out of the box. And if you look at it another way, it looks like you're going back down into the box. So I don't know what our reading today is going to be about. You know, but let's see. Let's see. I'm kind of excited. I'm always excited to be here with the Divine Masculines. Um, hoping that I can bring a message that's going to help with your most important parts of life, which is generally your family, your children. Well, let's start all over again. Yourself, your family, your children. And your children are your family and your wife or your significant other that you have. And uh, hoping to help the relationships to be on a more higher vibrational terms, more love, more empathy, and more compassion, more patience, and more um, willingness to wait for the desired effects of the actions that you're taking in order to create this life. Things don't always change overnight. So um, I got a message, okay? This message is really important. Uh, Rising Soul Tarot is a wonderful tarot station. I don't know the lady, the, it's a young girl. I don't know her and I don't, um, know anything other than Rising Soul Tarot. She is a spiritual scientist. She is capable of making connections on the spiritual plane that can be explained step by step by step. She is amazing about her spiritual explanations and, um, how to attain the positive mental attitude that we want and to build a foundation upon it, like step by step, how we, how we reinforce positivity into our lives, how we bring it in and anchor it into our lives. She is a spiritual scientist. I love this young lady. She is beautiful, professional, and, um, is going to be a benefit to everybody. And I will be recommending uh, on a daily basis that people go and see this channel. Um, she is awesome. She's helped me so much. I've been watching her for about two months now. And she really helps me to piece together the things that my intuition isn't catching on to. And so I guess what I'm saying is, um, you know, she knows the mechanics She's like a mechanic and she knows each little part and piece and where it's working at and what needs to be tweaked or whatever to help attain the positive, loving, compassionate attitudes that we want to bring into the new world. Okay, so our archetype today is coming out of the box. Um, let's roll the dice and see where it's going to take us. This is Today is Saturday the 18th. The moon is between almost into Libra. Let's see. She went into Libra last night at th or this morning at 3.22 a.m. So we got a lot of balance on this um, Virgo where the Virgo is all about service to others. Libra is going to bring in a little balance about being more serviceable to oneself because we must help self before we can help others. I want to tell all you fathers out there I love you, all you husbands that I love you. I want to tell you that God loves you and that while God has been talking to me about how important it is to be a father 
in a stable family. The calm and dignity that a man that loves his family can bring to it, especially when that man believes that his mission on earth at this point in time, while you're raising a family, is to dedicate you know, your life, your love, your soul to making sure your children have a good, strong foundation beneath them. Now, am I talking a money, house, all this? Those are great. But a better, stronger foundation is respect and dignity for self and others because this takes you out into the world capable of having relationships and getting along with others in order to pave your way to your um, your future. And so you are the important key that's between them and their future and showing how to have relationships. How does a man talk to his children and how does a ch man allow his children to talk to him, which should be about every day. There should be nothing that a child cannot talk about with their father. We have Jupiter expansion. We have nine, the end of situations. And we have Aries leadership and forward moving action. Um, somebody is possibly expanding outward, breaking barriers, um, looking in places maybe they haven't looked before, exploring, leading themselves towards better luck and destiny. Because we do make our own luck. We make our own luck by being, um, yeah, how do we make our luck? Well, let me tell you something. Every time you smile or give the, somebody else a reason to smile, the universe gives you brown point. Every time you take the hand of someone and gently lead and guide them to a place they need to be and they can't make that step through fear and you use your abilities to lead and guide them there with gentleness and patience, you get five brownie points, okay? For every time you go out of your way to help somebody because your heart wants to see solace and comfort in another living creature, no matter what it is, you get a buku of brownie points. Now, all these you may not get back at once. All these you might not get for a while, but they add up and they add up. And then things begin to change for you. Better luck begins to come in. Better things start to happen. More opportunities come in. It builds upon itself. And this is something that that lady that I was talking to you about brought to my attention, how we build the foundations of our blessings and luck. God does not give them to us just because we ask for them. Faith is nothing without actions and works. And this right here is talking about somebody who believes in themselves for nine, the end of a situation, enough to start something new and are taking leadership and action in making it manifest for them. See, manifestation is not hard to do, but it does take discipline and action and a little bit of focus, time, five minutes a day on something you want to manifest. And as you begin to enjoy it, maybe 10 minutes a day, and then it starts manifesting faster, and then maybe 20 minutes a day, and it comes in even faster. It should be something you love, a hobby, something you care about. And what is there more important to care about than being a father and teaching these wonderful qualities to your children, your brothers, sisters, your grandchildren, your cousins, your nieces, your nephews? You 
This is heroic actions right here. This is coming up out of the box and being that, you know, the star of the show. One little bit at a time, one smile and hand of comforting love at a time. Being a leader, showing the way to those who are looking up to you to see the way. Showing the way with patience, showing the way with love, showing the way with courage. Showing that sometimes it's okay to be vulnerable and afraid because we don't know what's coming. But we walk in faith, believing that the universe wants us to experience the experience of these new things that we can grow. And that's exactly what's about the box. I'll read it to you in a minute, but we want to grow. We need to change ourselves. We need to change into new situations. And we want the change to be more positive. We never want to regress. And I don't think any of you guys out here are regressing. Uh, we want to bring new things into our life, new thoughts, new perceptions. And today I want to say that you're you are the hero of your family and you need to feel that and know that that without your with your leadership your guidance your patience your love towards your beloved ones will so much come back to you in the years to come 20 years from now this connection that you make with them today by, you know, connecting to their world and help show them through their world the things that they love to share and guide them within that sphere of life. Not trying to make them do what you love, but bringing out their creativity. You, their father, can even learn from this. I mean, I know I don't want to be rude or anything, but I learn from kids all the time. I still learn from children. I watch the children. I have a daycare right across the street. And um, I well, I look out this window right here next to me and I can see, you know, 50 kids a day playing and having fun. I love to watch them. They're so wise and smart, and they really do want to do the right thing. And that's the whole key is guiding them into really wanting to do the right thing while allowing them to have their creativity within them expressed. So not what you want them to create, but allowing them to be who they were meant to be when they got sent here, because we all have a program, all of us. The sea turtle laying eggs. I, I just saw thousands of eggs pop before my mind. Yeah, your 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 babies are are little sea turtles popping up from these little eggs that you know you help to fertilize, bringing this little individual into the world. These little individuals that have programs already in their hearts and your job as father is to help them find their passions and support them in that. We do not want to implant our passions onto our children. It is the time and day when we allow our children's passions to be fertilized with our love and believing in them to teach them to be creators in the new world. That's your job. Who more than anyone will experience the new world that we're helping to create is our children, our grandchildren. What a wonderful thing to think, right? 
that we're changing the world for a new species of humanity to be upon this planet, a species that cares about all life, nurtures all life, loves all life. Oh my God. And out of darkness, the pearls emerge. You know, the pearl is created inside the clam with dirt and sludge and grit and grind. All these things that we went through, what our parents went through, what our parents before us went through, the world of struggle and hardship. But we're going to give birth to this new pearl and bring about a better world. And our children and grandchildren and forebearers, you know, those who come after us will enjoy this. But guess what? We don't die. There's no such thing as death. We just step into an unknown world of which we wait until we're ready to be born back into the material world again. Huh. Well, it's got the shape of a cat on it, but I'm not sure. A golden cat. The truth, maybe gold, pure, pure truth. Um, you know, we'll be back. And when we come back, we get to enjoy the world that we were here to begin. Well, it began with the hippies, right? Back in the 50s and, you know, everybody started like, you know, getting like, I, I don't want to do what you tell me anymore. And our children are going to feel even more of that because independence is going to become a part of our future. Uh, independence and you know, just knowing within ourselves what we're supposed to be here to do and then facing the fear of it and doing it, such as me. I knew I was supposed to give messages. Getting the messages out took years of facing fear because I had, um, you know, I was afraid of people, so I hid away for a long, long time before I ever went homeless. I still think that's why God kicked me out to get me out to talking to people and to seeing how wonderful people are in their most purest moments, the purity in their souls. And I began to fall in love with people. I thought everybody hated me, you know, and it wasn't nothing like that at all. And so, you know, I began to realize through meeting all these people, through my wanderings, that everybody has a beautiful spiritual soul within them that knows exactly what it needs and wants. But there's so many people in between being born and being a grown up that are telling you what you want that you really don't get a lot of time to think about what you want. So I believe that our job is not to tell children what they want, but to ask them the question of what they want and what they see and what they would like to uh, entertain in their future. So we can find out who they are as much as we know who we are. And if we don't know who we are, we definitely don't need to be telling the children who they are because sometimes children are way smarter than we ever can be. And we need to come up out of the box on that, out of the mouth of babes. I've heard some of the younger generations say some things that blew my mind. Think young, be, be their age. When you talk to your children, Drop down to your five-year-old, 10-year-old, however old, and uh, be their age. It's very important. You have a hero's role, and I want you to know that. You're a hero because you brought children into this world, and they need to see you in your magic Superman cape, teaching them how to be their own heroes as well. Dad. Dad.
My dad, I love my dad. My dad taught me how to fight. My dad taught me how to read. And listen, something else my dad taught me. He told me, Connie, don't worry about your life. Because let me tell you something. If you can read, you can do anything. God, that made so much sense to me. If you can read, you can do anything. Because you can read how to do it and then begin to work on and experience it and move as you go along. So my dad said, if you love something, read about it. And then begin to do what you can to move along with what you're reading. Act it out. Play the game. So there's nothing you can't do because if you need to do it, you can get a book on how to do it and you can read about it and then begin acting out the situations that you're reading in the book and get ready to make mistakes and failures because that's what happens. But the most important thing is to overcome and teach your children that anything can be done and you can bring all this new energy into your life by just believing this in faith. All this new energy that you can share with your family, your children, because listen, life is all about family, children, wives, husbands. I mean, you know, unless you've got enough money to travel constantly and do all that other stuff that people do that do have all that money, I don't know. But on my daily basis, the most important things around me are my family, my puppies, Daisy and Daffy, and um, my son, Michael Dell. So, you know, bringing new things into our life to keep us interested and things like that does good for the whole family. Us learning things together, gardening together, working together, it brings closeness and companionship. And um, anything you ever go do, if your child can go do it with you, make them your buddy and take them along. Yeah, waiting for your ships to sail in or looking out over, you know, these are beautiful emotions. And this is just waiting for something to come in. Growth, Aries again, action, sun and Aries, waiting to take action. Okay, somebody's waiting to take action, waiting to take action on something. They're watching for something to come in, a clue, um, an understanding. Um, yeah, or you have taken action on something and it is coming in. Okay, what's this divine masculine taking action on? At the end of this, I'll read the box about coming up out of the box, leaving old things behind, building upon new things, bringing new ideas into your life, basically, and not allowing the way you were taught to stop you from doing anything different. Hey, victory. Okay, Divine Masculine, what kind of action is coming your way? Hmm. Conflict, Five of Swords, and you walked away a winner. Yeah, a disappointment has come in. Family argument, maybe. Conflict. Maybe something you was waiting for didn't show up. That's what I get from this. Something you were waiting for didn't show up. Okay. 
Well, all right, all right, we're gonna let that go. So now, what we're gonna do, we're going to um, let it pass. And um, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again, right? Yes, celebration and victory. So we never wanna let anything stop us from achieving our hopes, desires, and goals. It looks like you won whatever conflict it was, whether it was with yourself or with the universe or with someone else in your in your vicinity. Okay. You're walking away or have walked away. You're like, no, I don't wanna play. I'm not going there. I'm going to just let all that go. This is Jupiter or um, Saturn in Pisces. You're going to let it go. You're going to leave it where it's at and turn around and walk away without expecting anything. And there's the Wheel of Fortune. It was the best thing you could do. It brought balance. It brought foresight. It brought, it made you feel much better because once you walk away, you leave the problem right where it is and it doesn't follow you, right? It, it can't follow you if you don't want to. You leave that behind and we walk away. Now, where's Divine Masculine walking to at this time? I'm expecting something, there was conflict, you're walking away. Where are you walking to? The magician manifesting something better. Manifesting something better. No. To stoicism. Right now you're very detached. Um, you've taken the higher mind road. You've transformed. You may be a little, you know, frustrated right now. may want to um, move into your heart, open your heart, move down into your heart, unless you, you know, I mean, right here, this is all about boundaries, detachment, observing, um, and kind of just staying out of the, you know, like you're on the clouds, you've left this world and you're up there looking down and you're not really wanting to come down right now <laughs> or at the point of time of this energy, you're contemplating, you're looking, you're thinking, butterflies everywhere, you're transmuting the energies. You're transmuting and, and, and transforming. Okay. Yay, yay, good. A tower. Alrighty then. A tower. Well, it is happening for all of us. We're all going through towers, realizations, understandings. Um, seeing things that we never thought we'd ever see. Um, this tower says you see it. You see it all. I see this eye right here looking all down, you know. You see how what wherever you are right now brought you to this place. Okay or were have brought you to this tower and you see how you got there all right well spirit now show us show us them coming out because once you get to the tower and it sweeps everything away that you thought was about whatever subject or idealism or whatever it was it opens you to a new refreshing perspective emotional intelligence it brings better things into your life king of water love real love 
real love. Yeah. Maybe you are looking for love, true love. Maybe that's what this is all about. True love. It's in you. You become your first true love. And then after that, you'll draw the true, true love to you. Because how are you going to know what you want if you don't know what you yourself love? Desire. Desires. A desire for light, a desire for the sun, a desire to shine, a desire to feel, a desire to care about yourself. Is it hard? Yes. Does it take courage? Yes. Believe me, I know how hard and how much courage it takes to learn to love yourself. But when you learn to love yourself, everybody will benefit from that. Everybody benefits from a person who loves themselves because then they're capable of truly, truly, truly loving others. And love brings your desires into view. Emotional love, emotional fulfillment, fulfillment of your desires, fulfillment of your hopes, prayers, wishes. And this is under the Three of Wands, waiting for your ship to come in. It's a spiritual world. It's a spiritual world. So we got to build our spirit first for the foundation of our physical world. There's nothing that's brought into this world if it isn't a seed of some kind. And a seed is also a thought, an idea your imagination, you're a seed. You're actually a plain seed pod. You can erase all the old stuff and put new seeds in and grow them, transform. Yeah, you're the hero. And you do this for those that you love. Not, you know, I mean, you love yourself so you can be a good love for all, for your family. That is heroic. Come out of the box and think in new ways. Fiery action again. Aries again. Leadership again. And that's everything a father is. The, the divine masculine are wonderful leaders. And if you don't know, you know, exactly how to be a leader, well, then start looking up some of the great leaders of the world. Some of the leaders that, you know, to me, Nelson Mandela, Gandhi, Martin Luther King, um, George Washington, but I don't really like that because I didn't like it when they come over here and took over the the Native Americans and shot everything up. So, yeah, I mean, Abraham Lincoln, um, we have had some good leaders, you know, uh, spiritual, political. Um, I don't know anything about war or anything like that, so I couldn't come up with anything from there. But, um, yeah. Yeah, so, so look up what it takes to be a leader. The main thing it takes is courage. To be courageous. To be strong enough to believe in yourself. To stand up and speak your truth and your peace. That's the main thing. Is, is, is loving you know, if you love your life in the way you live, then, you know, you absolutely want to share that with others. And so it, it does take courage, <laughs> the maiden. So what is this? Your divine feminine energy could be talking to a Virgo. 
but your divine feminine energy, you know, that youthful energy that's not afraid of nothing, that takes off skipping down the trail, whether male or female, you know, well, usually men don't skip down the trail, even teenagers, male and female. But anyway, to be vulnerable, to go into your soft side, to love yourself and give yourself the encouragement and positive energy you need to push through. And and to go check out Rising Soul Tarot because um, she has the concepts down so good. It takes her five, ten minutes to get into it. But if, if you can understand anything she's saying, then she she can help a lot with our spiritual energy, learning how to bring positivity in and holding on to it and how it builds upon like step by step by step. And we have heard about these steps for generations and generations, right? Yeah. So, and look at her. She's taking a step. Maybe that's what God's saying. Take that first step. And that first step is the hardest. To take heart and take courage. Be brave. Be vulnerable. Be willing to make a mistake. Because we never do it right the first time. It takes several times to get anything right. Everybody's like, oh my God, I failed. No. No, you didn't fail. You practiced. It's practice. You don't fail. You're practicing. And when we begin doing something, it takes practice to make it perfect. Right? King of Swords knows that. So does this hero here in number 12. The desire to be the hero. The desire to move forward in your own life. To bring change, fresh energy, uh, taking up a new hobby, taking up a new attitude, taking up a new um, perception on life, bringing more love and balance into your life, getting out of the box and saying, I don't like it in here. It's dark and dreary, and boring, nothing's going on, blah, blah, blah. Let's get out and do something exciting. Balance. Yeah, bring balance into your life. You know, I can't say it enough of how much you need to appreciate and love yourself. Be kind and gentle with yourself so that you can share that with those you love. The balance. This is under the King of Swords. Bring in balance. Okay, let's see what we get after the tower. Huh. That's too many. It fell out. What do we get after the tower? Divine masculine. The mother. Wow, all divine masculine energies on top, and then bang, we have the tower. We have the divine masculine down here, and then the rest are divine feminine energies. So the tower brings in that vulnerability that you need, needed, um, helping you to get in touch with your divine feminine side, an energy we all have. Uh, the motherly energy within you, the nurturing energy within you, um, the creative energy within you. Um, what else can I say? The energy within you that gives birth to your creations that you take action for. these are divine feminines all these are divine masculine so it looks like that you broke out of the tower and got in touch with your more tender divine feminine energies you came out of the box basically i don't even have to tell you about the box hardly but because it's basically like right there everything was all tightened and boom 
and you're out, you're glowing, you're being um, adventurous, expressive, you're balancing out these things, and you're you're loving and nurturing yourself. Um, where's the box? Okay. Let's bring this out. I want to read this before we shut down Divine Masculines. Love you guys. Thank you for being here with me today. Um, I'm praying for all of us, and I know we're all going to make it. We're all going to grow. We're all going to teach our children better. And, um, you know, in a, in a few years, I hear in the next five years, this planet is going to shift like Oh my gosh, we're not going to recognize it. So let's get started. Let's get the show on the road. Here we are, the box, the cage, the rules, the norm. We all live to some degree within the confines of the box. This archetype represents everything that is known, anticipated, and expected. It holds us in place while simultaneously holding us back from our greatest visions. The box is sneaky, insidious, and everywhere, limiting us at the most unconscious levels. It is built of layer upon layer of social constructs and pressures. Breaking through its confines requires awareness, continued effort, and bravery the box may appear as expectations from parents, a well-paying but heartless job, the pressure to look or behave like others, or simply to stay small. There is a box around you now made of some type of confining thought. What is it? The box shifts and morphs as we grow. This is part of its multi-layered nature. Once you break through one layer, another will present itself to you. Keep going. Break through. An exquisite life requires it. When you're in the light, you have structure, order, coherence, and logic. When you're in the dark, you feel limitations, rigid judgment, and fear. So break out of the box. Moving outside of the box is exhilarating and expansive, but destabilizing. Others will wonder what you are doing and why you will, too. This is part of the process. So coming out of our boxes, being different, teaching our children that they are special and that they have, you know, that we respect their ideas and their view of the world as we help to mold and shape them as they go along. Okay, guys, I love you guys. Have a wonderful day. Peace and light to everybody. God bless you. Um, thanks for your like, share, subscribes. Bye-bye.